There are more than 400,000 NCAA student athletes. NCAA on campus is their story. I'm Stacy Pates and you're watching NCAA on campus. It was last year during March Madness that Tang Tun Chin blazed his way onto the NCAA basketball scene. The junior from BYU Hawaii led the Seasiders into the national championship game against Bellarmine. Bellarmine prevailed that day, but Tang Tung Chin's name will live on in D2 basketball history. Not many fans know him by his Taiwanese given name, but we all know him by his nickname, which perfectly captures the way he plays the game. Last month, as his NCAA career neared its end, we caught up with Jet Chang. I got my nickname from a friend when I was uh, in uh, Las Vegas for some tournament back in uh, 2007. I think my game and my strength is uh, very fast, like the pace is fast, mostly just fast spray and penetrate. If you try to guard him in the open court, you just can't. He's a jet, that's why they call him a jet. You know, he's just, he's just unstoppable. I remember before we played West Liberty, my assistant said, well, man, they get a lot of steals from behind. And I said, they won't with jet. <laughs> you know, he does, he moves. Once he, he has an explosive step, and that's a pretty good description of him. My mom and my, my dad never call me Jet. They call me Zhong Xian. College life is a challenge for any 18-year-old, but when Jet went off to BYU Hawaii, he faced the additional hurdles of being 5,000 miles away from his home in Taiwan, being in a different country, and communicating in a foreign language. It's pretty hard for me to be away from my family because, you know, I used to just be around with my mom and my sister all the time. and. They take care of me. I don't need to worry too much about life, anything. I didn't really speak uh, English at all when I graduated from high school. So I had a lot of trouble the first two years because on the core you have to communicate. You have to be able to communicate with the coach and also your teammate. And sometimes I want to like uh, express like my feeling and try to talk to them, but I just couldn't like find the right word to to, to speak up. So. Most of the time, I just, just, just choose not to speak. I learned my English basically just from listening to music, watch movie, and paying attention in the class, and just talk to people as much as I can. Even I didn't really can speak, but it doesn't matter. Just you have to practice, right? Sometimes I, I understand, but most of the time, I just pretend I understand. The thing about Jed is when it comes to communication, he understands, you know, he's, he's not dumb. And Sometimes it gets a little offensive if you, if you try to talk to him slowly, you know, and try to like draw pictures for him. He understands, um, and his English has gotten a lot better since when he first came here. Jet may have a few problems with his English, but he has no trouble communicating in the international language of basketball. He has a great game as far as the open court taking it to the hole, but he also gets hot from the outside. He has a great crossover move. We'll turn someone around, pull up, and shoot a three and really can shoot about any time he wants. He sees people defensively, you know, he's very good and, and just very athletic, so it's been nice to have him. I don't really focus on, on the scoring. I just try to do the thing that can make the team better. When the team needs me to score, I score. When the team needs me to, uh, to defend, I defend, so. He's very, you know, unselfish and he knows when he needs to score and he does it. He knows what he needs to do and he does it. And to be playing with him this year is it's just a great opportunity for me because uh, he creates shots for me. He gets me open and I'm just grateful to have him on this team. Jet burst into the national consciousness last season when he led his team into the NCAA Division II championship game and was named the most outstanding player of the Elite Eight after averaging 33.3 points per game and putting up 43 points in the semifinal win. Jet did it all by not thinking too much. During the time I didn't think too much, just try to focus as much as I can, try to help out the team, you know, do as much as I can. That run last year was, was unforgettable. You know, just being a part of that team, the chemistry and the camaraderie, it's, it's, it's unforgettable. It's once in a lifetime opportunity, but we want to recreate those kinds of experiences here. We, we don't want it to be something that, that happens every now and then. Here at BYU Hawaii, especially for this team, we want it to keep it going. Jet's NCAA career ended earlier this month, but he hopes to continue playing basketball. He is a part of the Taiwanese national basketball team, but his dream is to play in another league, 
My NBA dream started when I was seven or eight. If I keep working hard, maybe I get a chance to to try or work out with the NBA team. And if everything's going well, maybe I have my shot to uh, to be able to play in the NBA. I really feel, you know, that he'll have an opportunity on the next level. It's just a matter of timing. And Jet in the open court is as good as anyone, you know, I've seen. I think if I don't get drafted, I will spend like a couple months or one year to keep trying to gain a leak. If I can realize if you don't, still don't make it, you got to find a way out. Got to find another way to play, continue to play basketball. Um, maybe Euro, maybe Asia. I like basketball because it has become a part of my life. Everything is about basketball. Basketball takes me to Iwa uh, Hawaii and give me an opportunity to be, be able to uh, attend school in the United States and learn English. Yeah. Good luck, Jet. We'll be watching to see where you land next. Before we end this edition of NCAA on campus, let's hear from NCAA President Mark Emmert. It's time for Ask Mark. Hi, Dr. Emmert. I am Danielle Dancer, a senior field hockey player at Eastern University. I am the SAC president, and I wanted to know how important it is for NCAA schools to be involved in community outreach. I think, Danielle, community outreach is, uh, is a critically important part of just one's education and personal development. One of the things that we like to emphasize and that I know as an educator and even as a father has been terribly important to me is that um, our students uh, who are involved in intercollegiate athletics have a chance to gain full exposure to everything that a university has to offer in the classroom, on the on the courts and the fields of competition, but also out into the community so that they become fully versed in what it is to be a solid citizen and a member of active member of a community and contribute to those communities. It also, of course, paints a, a, a very good uh, profile of the role of student athletes in uh, your campus community and around your town when, when people see student athletes giving back in important ways. So it, it certainly promotes your sport and your, and your athletic program, but much more importantly, it's actually about your development as an individual. And so I'm a, I'm a hearty supporter of community service by our student athletes. That is all for this edition of On Campus. Thank you for watching. And for more great stories about student athletes, continue to check out our show right here at NCAA.com. Until next time, remember to make the most of your time on campus.